Okay, we are recording. That is excellent. However, there she is. Okay, there she is. Go ahead and make her a co-host. Hello and welcome everybody. Getting everybody in the room, getting ready to start this off. Very excited to welcome you to another of our wonderful um, Women in Publishing sponsor webinar series. So really quickly before I get started, I just want to introduce everybody to Amy. Amy, you can go ahead and take us live on Facebook if you would, please. Uh, Amy Ayers is one of our new assistants. For those of you who don't know, we were really sad to lose Nancy Caviones, who has been my right-hand person for <laughs> since 2016, and I can barely talk about it without bursting into tears. Um, so we have brought in two new members to help support the team. And I just wanted to make sure that everybody sees Amy. We'll introduce you to Catherine at another point in time. So thank you, Amy. I'm going to ask you to, um, Amy's going to be here to help us moderate this webinar and um, and we'll help with the, with the, with the Q&A session at the end. But now let's bring up uh, Amy, if you want to hide your camera and we will um, get into business. Welcome, Dr. Cindy Childress. So glad to have you back with us. Um, I, I, you are muted, I think. Oh, oh now you're not muted. Okay. I am going to read your bio and tell everybody, um, everybody about who you are and what we're doing here today. We are here to learn about how to write a nonfiction book that people are actually going to want to read. So we brought in an expert on here. Dr. Cindy Childress is the founder of Childress Communication and an Amazon bestselling ghost writer. She loves taking your ideas and writing them down with clarity to create a book that shares your genius with the world. She has a passion for working on books like the ones that saved her sanity when she was just to feel better and knows the power of a book and wants to help others use that book as a way to share their message with the world. Um, offering many services uh, to our clients. These include ghostwriting, speaking, helping you actually write your book, all these different services that um, with different levels of involvement during the entire writing process. And we will be visit, we will be posting her um, website link. She also has a really, really great course that's $97. And her special offer is when you purchase that course, you get a free bonus call with her one-on-one. -on -one. So we'll be sharing that information. And I just want to thank you so much for being a sponsor of our of our community and our event and, and being here to share your knowledge with our with our attendees and, and audience is just it's really special to us. So thank you. Thank you, Alexa. Okay, so here's the way this is going to roll for everybody. Um, feel free to use the chat box to tell us who you're already doing it, where you're all coming from all over the place, which is wonderful. We're excited to see our international community. I am going to very shortly be quiet and uh, allow our guest expert to take on um, her training session here, you can put your questions in the Q&A box. And at the end of the session, we will allow for time to get those questions answered. And um, again, thank you to our special guest. And I'm going to remove myself here and let you take over. Thank you. Um, and I'm so excited, everybody who is here live. I know how um, many different things are vying for our attention. So it means a lot to me that you chose to be here today. So I'm going to share my screen. And please do tell me if you don't see what I want you to see. But um, we should be um, starting the presentation yeah, now. Yep, we're good. Okay, fantastic. So here we go, a little bit about myself. So I do have a PhD in English, but I'm not one of those people who just came out of the womb like writing with no errors. And in fact, my freshman year of college, our first assignment was to write a paper about Oedipus Rex. I bet some of you have read that play and had to write papers about it too. And the way the professor prepared us to write these papers is we went over the entire Diana Hacker style guide that um, anyone who took freshman composition, you most likely use that um, textbook in your class. And so what happened is I was bombarded with all these rules that I had to follow. And I believed that all I had to do is sit down and like bang it out and I would have, you know, 
the most genius thesis on Oedipus that was ever penned, okay? And so I believed that, but every time I sat down, I really couldn't write anything at all. And so it was the night before this paper was due. Um, I didn't even start it until, I think it was after midnight. It wasn't even midnight proper. And I wrote it until I had to go to chapel at 8 a.m. that morning. I was um, at a, um, a religious school for my first two years. And so with that six hours, when I was so tired writing, I'm gonna tell you when I got that essay back, every single sentence had some kind of red mark on it. Nothing was as it should have been. And I was crushed. And I really think I should have made an F on that paper, but she gave me some grace and I, I made a D. And somehow I squeaked through that semester, but you know, my confidence was really kicked in the teeth. And I wasn't sure if I was cut out for rotting at all. And then that summer, I took a um, summer school course at a local, um, community college with a professor who had a different approach. What he did is teach us a writing process. For each paper he assigned, he just gave us a, a list of steps of things to do. And I just followed those steps and turned in my work step by step. And by the time I would get to the end, I'll never forget, I made an A on that first paper. And I was like, what? Didn't you find tons of mistakes? And what he did is he just taught us a writing process. And then along the way, as needed, as helpful, he would remind us of a role here or there. And that made it a lot easier to just write, to just organize my thoughts. And then from there, I was a shooting star, just following a writing process, not trying to sit down and magically bang out something amazing, but also not getting too hung up on the rules while I really just needed to write and really understand my ideas. So here you can see I do, um, I'm there with my dissertation director and um, with my PhD, and I've gone on in my writing business to win um, a, a business award with the American Business Awards. There I am accepting my trophy in 2022. Um, I've also won two international business awards, so I'm really excited for all the international people that are here today. Um, I've served authors in 16 different countries. Um, and no doubt a, a large part of that is that myself, I've lived overseas in Malaysia and also Indonesia. So there I am chairing an event wearing a sari um, while I was in uh, Indonesia. So I've been a lot of different places, had a lot of different experiences. Um, Laura Belgray is one of my mentors. Um, I'm pictured here with my husband at one of my clients book launch events um, and she launched her book. It was number one the first day it launched and she also launched a um, an R&B single hit song that same day that also went to number one. So that was really exciting for us. Um, and then something about me personally, I'm a cat and kitten foster mom. In fact, right now I have three kittens in the ensuite bathroom and closet adjacent to my office that I just checked in on before I arrived to the webinar today. So I have a quick testimonial here because the business savvy isn't just what I do for my business, but it's also something that I really teach my clients and I care a lot about that your book is a product and even if you don't have a program or a course to sell with it, it still, um, it still should be treated like a business. And Patricia Rogers says, I got so much more than expected working with Dr. Cindy. That's what my clients call me. Um, she helped me bring my content into form while also showing me how authorship could springboard my business. In just one year, I drafted two manuscripts, got editing well underway and gained a firm foundation of resources for publishing, all while growing my business 250%. Um, she's a cranial sacral therapist. So she says, thank you for your comprehensive expertise, Dr. Cindy. Well, thank you, Patricia, for those lovely words. And just oop, before we get to the fun part here, I just want to give you some stats on my success. So in the past, um, since 2017, I've ghostwritten and edited 41 published books. And um, this includes two clients who have signed book deals and three business awards for my business, as I mentioned. Also, books I've worked on have racked up six book awards. And to me, this is the most important thing I'm telling you because there are a lot of 
people in this space with bestsellers under their belt, some of them more bestsellers than I have, but you will be hard pressed to find a lot of other people in this space also talking about the book awards their clients win. And I'm telling you about that. And that's why I'm so passionate about the talk I'm giving you today, telling you the things that we're doing inside of my courses and I'm doing with my private clients to help them um, achieve these levels of success. So here, we have um, a cute corgi, but seriously, when I talk about book writing at cocktail parties, people often pull me aside and say, I wrote a book. And they say it like they're admitting to stealing a toy from a child. And essentially, they wrote a book and it's published, but it never quote unquote went anywhere. And some of these authors have even taken their books off of Amazon, so you can't even read them if you wanted to. And that's because they're not happy with their books and they suffer from something I call author shame, kind of like the cone of shame that we see here. And I just want to see, I know there's a lot of people here today. I want to see in the chat, just put a yes. If you have ever been afraid, you would have author shame if you wrote your book or if you published your book, or maybe some of you have already published a first or even a second book. And uh, you felt a little author shame. Don't be bashful. We are all friends here. Yes, um, I see a lot of yeses, even from Alexa. Wow. Yes, this is um, this is very common. And I want to do everything that I can to help us avoid that feeling. Yes. Um, and I want to tell you about a particular conversation that I had. Um, I recently spoke with an author in exactly this author shame problem. And she's a career coach. And what she did is sit down and write whatever she thought. So she wrote a wonderfully imaginative book about a talking pigeon. And so what would happen is someone having um, a career problem would sit on a bench and the pigeon would fly down and talk to them. I mean, it sounds adorable, but the thing is, um, so the themes in the book, we're talking around issues like being more assertive and expanding your skills, things that she does with her coaching clients but she was taking the long route to get there to write a fiction book about a talking pigeon and then expecting that to translate into career coaches. And in fact, that did not pan out for her. So the problem with writing just for yourself is that you can end up with a book that no one wants to read. You can launch your precious book to crickets and then blame yourself that you never got a book agent or that you only sold five books and your mom bought four of them. True story. I mean, maybe your genius idea will just pop out of you, but what if it doesn't? So many first-time authors have books that flop because they were advised to write whatever they wanted and took a very me-centered approach. So tell me in the chat if you have ever tried to just start writing, just sit down and start somewhere. Some of you may have even had success with that. Um, if you, if you have given that a try, just put a yes. I can tell you from my experience, yes, Rhonda, when I've sat down and just tried to, to write just to free flow, well, I've got a whole folder on my computer of, you know, first pages or first five pages or yes, Amy, yes, I hear you, Nil Nilima, um, absolutely right, yeah. And so this can be therapeutic to just write what we think and feel, and I'm a big advocate of it, but it's not as likely to go gangbusters and more likely to feel like a waste of time, money, and effort when you're just vomiting your ideas and stories onto the page and expecting people to magically see the brilliance there. That was my problem with that first paper, right? So these authors come to work with me on their second or third books without making those mistakes. And many more work with me on their first books because I know how to avoid writer shame or author shame and help you write a book you'll be proud to share because it achieves your goals. See, everyone else is telling you to just write what you want to say, but I'm telling you to write just what your readers want to read. So in the next uh, 20 to 25 minutes, I'll tell you three unexpected tips I shared with the career coach so she could write her next book in a way people can't wait to get their hands on. 
And then we'll dig into the workbook for you to get started. So I have a workbook that we're gonna go over after the slides. Now, my method is not navel gazing and digging into your soul, at least not until you do something else first. To write a book that matters, choose an audience and write your book just for them. So my three steps to write a book people actually want to read are determine who wants to read your book. And don't worry, there's a later slide with all of these on it. And number two, know why do they want to read this book now? And three, with this knowledge, as you're writing your book, future pace their desired outcome after reading your book. So we're going to go over each of these tips, beginning with um, determining who you want to write your book for. This is actually where we began um, when I was teaching English composition um, as a professor. I would start my students not with what's your topic or even what's the assignment for the paper. It was, who do you want to talk to? What, what do they want to know? What do you have to say to them? So let's dig in here. So audience is everything. And when you know exactly who you're writing your book for, you know which details and stories will draw them in like a best friend. And you also know who it's not for. You can stop trying to impress your esteemed colleagues as well as relate to the UPS woman and don't forget your dentist plus your mentor. So this puts to rest a lot of choices about style, levels of formality and information, how much depth to go into, which stories to tell, etc. Because it's all about them, not about how smart you are and all the experience you have. So, for example, when I rented my WeWork office, I had coffee with a commercial real estate investor who had an idea for a book. And like many of you, I'm sure he was a successful business owner and he wanted to share his knowledge. So the book he told me he wanted to write was for millennials about how to invest in real estate. And since they were buying homes at record lows, he asked me that was what he wanted to focus on. And as we discussed his goals for the book, we uncovered that he had very few millennials in his following. Actually, the only um, millennials that he really had access to were his son and his son's friends, most of whom were actually homeowners. So he revised his audience to be middle-class, middle-aged men who are afraid they won't have enough cushion for retirement. These were the people that he serves in his commercial real estate business, and these were people in his network already. So it was much clearer how the book could drive leads for his business, as well as how his very popular YouTube channel could be a vehicle for promoting his book. So I wanna see in the chat here, um, do you see how that different audience made sense for this author? You can just say a yes if it clicks. Why, even though he cared about millennials that were not buying real estate, that wasn't the right audience for him to reach, at least not with this first book. Yes, I see a lot of yeses here. I'm really glad um, to see that. So I agree with you. And with the new clarity that he had, he quickly knew what his target readers did and didn't know about his topic. And he knew how his information could help the readers solve their problems or achieve their transformation. And he knew what personal stories, examples, and information would be relatable to just those readers. And not only was his book on the top 100 on barnesandnoble.com in real estate and finance for 10 months, but he also used his book to land a talk on the TEDx stage by the same title as his book title. So he catapulted to author success and that happened immediately. And a big part of that was writing for the audience he already had access to. And we're gonna talk about that on your workbook in a little bit. So in choosing the middle-aged readers instead of millennials, we also considered why they would want to read his book now, now. So in other words, who's already looking for your solutions? That's the reader who's Googling the problem you can most easily solve right now. And you position yourself to solve that problem by understanding what they're ready to confront head on and what it's costing them. Now, this is different from what you know their biggest problem is, which is not always the same as what they think their problem is. So we have to meet them where they are 
as my business coach Ron Reich says, we have to sell them the pizza and give them the broccoli sometimes. And this is how you find your hottest readers and create the perfect book for them. Now, you might want to reach people who think the opposite of you and convince them, but those are not the people that will be lining up for your book. I worked with a, an author who was very passionate that he wanted to talk to people that completely disagreed with him, but in the course of editing his book, we found a kind of middle ground and he agreed that at least for the first hundred pages of the book, he needed to um, kind of hold people's hands and get them you know, slowly integrated into his way of thinking and overcome their objections and even call out their objections. Like I know some of you reading may think this or that. So you know, there's a way to do it, but it's a much harder way than talking to people who either agree already or are willing to perhaps agree. They're already open, in other words. And this is because you need loyal fans first and your popularity will attract even the dissenters who need what you've got to say, but that happens later. So try to write a book for people who don't want it and don't be surprised if you don't get a warm response from them. So uh, now we're on the next slide here. And I know um, Rachel Hollis it has learned this lesson the hard way. She's learned a lot of lessons the hard way, let me also say that. But um, she's been all the way from unknown to famous to infamous. But here you see her first two books. And the first one here, um, Party Girls, is a chick lit romance that completely flopped. And she told this story at the Traffic and Conversion um, event in 2019 that a literary agent had approached her and, and said, I think I could represent you to sell a book. Why don't you write one? And so Rachel just sat down and wrote whatever came to her mind that she'd always wanted to write. But then the agent had looked at Rachel's blogs and really hoped she would do something like her blogs. That was what the agent wanted to sell. So then Rachel self-published the book on her own and it was not a splash hit. And then even her cookbook was also self-published. Um, a lot of us think Girl, Wash Your Face is um, the first book she wrote, but that's just not true. She self-published several books before she got there. And she fully admits that a big reason um, this Party Girls book was not a success is she wrote it without thinking about why would anyone care about this? And why would they care about it coming from me? But of course, Rachel is not famous for that romance novel. For her fourth book, she compiled all the most frequently asked questions from her popular Facebook group and wrote up the answers to each one. Now it sounds simple, but this comp compilation of reader questions became Girl, Wash Your Face, the second highest nonfiction book of 2018 after Michelle Obama. Now there's no surprise why anybody wanted to read the former first lady's book, but what about a mom blogger? And I want to tell you, this doesn't only happen for people with big audiences, which Rachel already had at that time. And I want to be very transparent about that. Um, I want to introduce you to my client, Sandy Evenson. So Sandy says, Dr. Cindy's creative approach to book writing is magical. And I do have a wand, everybody. I wave it sometimes as needed. Um, she says, the depth and breadth of Cindy's knowledge, experience, and expertise are surpassed only by her love of her craft and her passion for teaching writing. She can see where your book is going even before you can. And I have her book right here. It is called The Woo Woo Way. And we wrote her book targeting her target reader, which is The Ageless Woman. And we asked as we were writing her book, what will the reader need to know? What will they find boring? We relied on her experience as a women's empowerment coach with coaching her clients to craft a book written just for people like her favorite clients, where they were when they found Sandy at first and began working with her. And this book debuted as a bestseller the day before it was launched. And not only that, she has won three book awards already this year. So let's just give some claps to Sandy. Um, she is amazing. And, um, the, and I'm going to read you um, an, an excerpt from a review from um, a Mind Valley um, reviewer. Uh, the Woo Woo Way is more than a book, it's an experience. The stories at the beginning of each chapter make Sandy's wisdom come to life. All you need to do is open a chapter, read the first five words, 
let them hook you and dive into the rest of the chapter for an inner journey. You will come out of it refreshed and wiser. What an experience. I mean, holy cow, who doesn't want people to say something like that after they read your book? And it happened because we were thinking, you know, who, and even, you know, woo woo is kind of a controversial phrase in itself, but we chose that because we just wanted people who were going to be into it and have, and be a big yes for that. And um, our third tip here is future pacing the reader's desired outcome. So this is the last point in my presentation and back to Rachel Hollis. She knew exactly how her target readers felt and what their lives were like. And she knew the difference it would make for them to hear her solutions, just like the real estate investor knew his readers wanted to make smart investment choices that would give them confidence they had enough savings for retirement. And Sandy knew her clients were so tired of not getting what they want and putting their needs on hold that they would be willing to do anything, even read a woo-woo book, if it would help them feel better and be happier. And all of these authors future paced their readers' desired outcomes throughout the book. So what do I mean by this exactly? So when you consider your readers' desired outcome, and this is in the workbook that we'll look at, by the way, you can reverse engineer the problem to see what is on the other side of it. So with the problem solved, what do they want to feel or experience or do? Sometimes they feel one way and they want to feel another way. That can be true, um, particularly for people that pick up memoirs. And, you know, sometimes they are just, they, they don't know how to do something. And then the book is going to teach them how to do it. You know, so there are a lot of ways that there can be these um, transformations or, you know, flip-flops. And this, whatever that is, it's your book's promise, and you're going to keep making it over and over in each chapter to hammer the point home. So for my client, Simon Severino, in his business book, Strategy Sprints, it's for CEOs who, don't, who are not able to take a vacation. And throughout his book, Simon tells readers how to solve their problems, and he promises, do this so you have the freedom you wanted when you created your business in the first place. Do this so you have the freedom you wanted when you created your business in the first place. We have some version of that sentence in every chapter. And I know that because I edited it very carefully to do so. And that is for this explicit reason. And another client of mine, Stacey DeWald, um, future paces in the subtitle, very subtitle of her book, Douchebags to Diamonds, How to Take Charge of Your Life and Attract Mr. Right, by the way, also um, a book award winner and a best-selling book. And her future pacing sounds like, I know it might seem impossible now, but follow my advice and you really might start dating jerks, maybe even find a guy worthy of you. And then later in her book, when she's gained the reader's trust and gotten them some wins, she starts saying, you're in a much healthier place now for love to find you. So she's telling the readers what to anticipate and she's telling them where they are in their transformational experience. And also I want you to always be asking yourself, does what you have to say help your readers toward the desired outcome? So if it does not help them toward the desired outcome, it's just a funny story or it's just something else that you happen to know, omit it. It doesn't go here. Not in that chapter, not in that section, maybe not even in your book. Make sure the book also has enough quick wins along the way so your readers feel like heroes and can't wait to learn more from you. They'll want your audio series, courses, retreats, certification programs, branded gear, and anything else they can get from you to help them be their ideal best. So you've got a better shot at avoiding author shame when you consider your end game from the start. Begin with a brainstorm about who most likely wants to hear from you on your topic. Then consider why they want to read your book now, right down to the search terms they're using to try to find your book, but it's not available yet. And find where do they want to be on the other side of solving their problem then future, future pace that path in your book. This also motivates you to finish the book and have people lined up at your book signings because they want to meet you and say, 
thank you for writing the perfect book for me. This was just what I needed to read. So with these thoughts in mind, I'm wondering which of these three, one, two, or three, um, is giving you the most ideas that you're gonna bring to your writing project now. Um, do you see a need to go back and look at who you're writing it for, or to think about why they're picking it up, or making sure that along the way, you're also telling the reader that they're on this journey and where they're going. Yeah, Sean says number three, a lot of number threes. Wow, that's great. Um, yes, Emily Deaton and Emily Pelly go for number three. Um, Nalima says one and three. Um, Mrs. Denise Cross says number one. Um, great, we've got a good, a good mix of people and um, I'm very glad for that. Now we're gonna look at the workbook in just a second, but before we do, I do just want to tell everybody that um, I'm kind of known for being overly generous and um, I'm going to give everybody that is here on the call today an opportunity to have a conversation with me um, just in respect for your time and attention here in the space. So, um, I know there's a $97 offer and now like I've probably lost some sales, but you know, that's actually okay with me. Um, we, you, you buy it too. It's really, really good. If you like what you see here, you will only love what you get there. Um, but uh, I would be happy to speak with anybody that wants to speak with me and I don't wanna make it hard for you to be able to do that. So I will um, put that here in the chat. Um, and I'm going to do that in just a second, but I do also want to share that I have an early bird special going on right now for my course, Crank Out Your Book in Eight Weeks. So um, there are a few bonuses that I want to tell you about because they're very exciting. So I'm having a one day author mastermind right here in Houston, Texas. This is going to be October 26th. And everyone that has participated in my courses in all of 2023 is invited to come. It's going to be amazing. And I have um, a chef from New Orleans who is going to make us a vegetarian and vegan dinner that is New Orleans inspired and the event will be at a beautiful co-working space in downtown Houston. We'll have a photographer to capture all your Instagram worthy moments um, and he's also going to take some videos for reels and um, you're going to be able to network with other authors and hear from great speakers who themselves are published authors and um, including Sandy Evenson. She is going to be there and um, also business coaches to really get into the business of books and writing. So that's what will be happening there. That's a free bonus with the course. Um, that's not the mini course, by the way, that's the big crank out your book in eight weeks course. Um, and I also do author debut um, salons with everybody who graduates from my program. So I just held one yesterday and all five participants came onto the Zoom stage and read their um, read a brief sample from the writing they've been working on. And it was such an amazing event. Everybody sounded so good. Their writing is so good. I'm so proud of them. And I also think it's a little bit uncommon for um, someone in my space to believe so much in the value of my teaching and um, the quality that comes from students when they go through my process that um, everybody in the program has a chance to do this and I stand beside it 1 million percent. We also have an alumni club called the A-List Authors Club where we have monthly check-ins each month and I invite guest speakers in who are experts on things that I am not an expert on um, and you get 12 months of access to this in order and also access to all of the replays all the way back to 2020. We've had people that were experts on audiobooks and um, book pre-launching. There's even a pre-launch calendar template in there um, in one of the handouts, um, how to use your book to um, sell speaking, um, lots of different things that you can um, really dive into as needed. And just to let you know, the dates of participation for these um, cohorts coming up are August 16th to August 11th. And these are small groups, coaching groups that are capped at five people. Each of the five in each group gets a 10 minute hot seat each week of our eight weeks. And after the first hour or so of the session, we have co-routing time after. And the way I do that is 
we start off by everyone goes around and says what their intention is that they want to spend the next, say, 55 minutes on. And then at five minutes till the hour, I come back in and, um, you know, go back on on my camera and turn off the mute and everybody comes back and checks in um, and we do that because I want to brag on everybody for how much you accomplished and also if anybody's stuck I don't want you to leave stuck and I work to make sure that um, when you do leave the call you are set to keep going and be on track with your project so that is um, what we have there. And I know there's been quite a few questions to come through. So before we get into the workbook, because I can always give that to you and you can do it on your own time, although I'm happy to teach the workbook, I uh, could teach all day long. I think you all can tell. Um, but I do want to address the questions first. So there's some in the Q&A box. And I know I didn't have time during the presentation, but I saw some other questions come through. So anybody that wants your question answered that you may have put in the chat, if you can go to the bottom um, navigation bar down there for Q&A, and if you can just copy and paste that question um, in there or you know type it over again if you like, um, I would be super happy to answer it. Um, and the first one is from Jane Clark, and she said, OMG goodness, I suffer from academia, academia too. Um, I struggle to lose my academic writing voice each time I sit down to compose. I feel like I'm cursed. Oh, I, I understand that feeling. And are there any suggestions for you? Yes, the way I broke myself out of that habit pretty well, although I think I still get a little stuck in it sometimes, is I studied copywriting. So the reason I studied copywriting is when I started my business, I couldn't hire anybody to write the words on my website or write the words in my newsletter. So I had to do that myself. And I knew they didn't need to sound like an academic paper, as you point out, Jane. And in studying copywriting, um, I learned really quickly the importance of using the same kind of language that your readers would use rather than using your kind of smarty pants language, if you will. Um, and just practicing copywriting was a place where I really got my sea legs on writing in a conversational way. And I'll also say reading poetry can be a great way to start writing in a more conversational way. And um, I know Frank O'Hara is known for writing his poems in what he calls um, telephone poetry, which is he wants to write his poems and have them sound as if you're overhearing a conversation. So that's a really interesting way to think about your writing and you might look at his poetry and maybe read a little bit before you sit down to write. And that might help you kind of get into um, the frame of mind as well. Um, so thank you for that question. And um, Irene Payne says, what was the name of the real estate book that made it? That is called Mailbox Money Mindset. So it has alliteration just like poetry. So um, the book is still available and I encourage you to check it out because it's really good. And it's not just really good as in um, well-written, but it has emotionally engaging stories as well as solid information. And that is a difficult thing that a lot of books strive toward that maybe don't quite achieve as well as I believe this client pulled it off. Um, and Janet Sparling says, is there a cap on the number of participants per class in the mini course? So the mini course is all pre-recorded and available on demand. So that the mini course is not, um, is not a coaching program, but you it's unlimited as many people can take advantage of it and um, the workbook that's in there and the uh, training videos as you possibly want. Um, and um, Dana Dillard asks, what is my best advice to promote your book? Well, Dana, I would take us all the way back to the beginning when you're first starting to write your book and Think about the fact that for your book to really be successful, the goal is for you to be promoting it for probably two to three years, to be talking about it and singing its praises to the rooftop for two to three years. So with that thought in mind, I encourage everyone to pace yourself on your book promotion. You will definitely want to have a pre-launch 
um, which is when, you know, before your book comes out, you are um, asking um, people to go ahead and pre-order it. And I would always encourage you to add some extra bonuses when they do that, because that encourages people to buy it now instead of later. Um, but then after the pre-launch and maybe after you hit bestseller, I'm sure a lot of you are familiar with the concept of a bestseller launch. Well, after that, a lot of people stop promoting their book. And then they wonder why no one's talking about it anymore and why it just kind of went fizzle. Well, if you don't do that, if you keep talking about your book, if you keep you know, pitching yourself to podcasts to come in and speak to your topic, if you keep pitching yourself to speak at events and hopefully you know, have your book for sale or even have the event purchase your book for everyone in attendance, um, and pitch your topic to the media when there's something in the larger conversation that your book speaks to, to say, hey, um, you should interview me because I have something particular to say on this topic. And by the way, it's in my book. Um, you can just promote, put little quotes of your book on social media forever. And the testimonials for your book, like the one I read for Sandy, that's something you can continue sharing, not just one time and it's over. Um, a lot of people think that after they say something on social media one time, or even say something in a talk one time, that you can never repeat it again because somebody heard it already. But I guarantee only AI is listening so carefully to capture every single word. And most of us regular human beings appreciate repetition. In fact, um, it usually takes three to seven times for us to hear something to really um, commit it to our knowledge base. So don't be afraid to repeat yourself and keep talking about your book. And when you do that, other people will keep talking about it too. Um, and I've just mentioned a lot of ways to promote your book that are um, digital and don't require you to go anywhere. But um, I think a good old fashioned um, events, um, a book launch locally where you are, maybe at an independent bookstore or even a Barnes and Noble, usually on midweek days, will be happy to host a local self-published author to come in. And um, when you travel, when you go to other cities, um, if you know some people there, ask them if they would be willing to help you put together an event while you're gonna be there. This is what I used to do when I was a poet. And when anytime I would go somewhere for any reason, I would look for the poetry venues and I would see if there were opportunities um, that I might be um, featured in one of the readings. And this is all stuff that you all can do as well. Um, and, Assertive Way asks, is structuring a book using your own framework a good idea? Yes, Assertive Way. Not only is it a good idea, it's a brilliant idea. And if you have a framework, I cannot strongly enough suggest that you do this. Now, there's a lot of reasons to write a framework book. And a big one is actually um, your copyright on that intellectual property. So of course, um, I'm sure, smarter, more um, legal experts than me have spoken here before about the legal aspects of writing. But um, if someone were to try to steal your framework, when you have it written out in detail in your book, it's gonna give you um, an extra leg to stand on um, if they don't play nice and stop using your framework or you know, give you um, a permission or get your permission or whatever would be necessary um, to smooth that over. But, um, Another thing though about using your framework to structure your book is you are laying the foundation for people to then probably work with you in a coaching program or maybe um, to take a course with you. And those don't need to be something different from your framework. If you take the classic business book Traction, um, you'll find that that book goes into great granular detail every single bit. I think it's 12 steps that they have um, for, uh, organizing a business and having it run smoothly. But not very many people can read traction and then just like implement everything and they're they're ready to go. Usually they read the book, they think this sounds great, they are overwhelmed and then, you know, they hire one of the traction certified coaches to help them implement um, the processes. And kind of on the other side of things, you can also have your framework be um quite minimal, like just give them small wins and then be saying in the book, I go into even more detail about this. So you can go whole kitchen sink, you can go just a ditch towel, but make sure whichever choice you make on your 
your your your book your framework book that this is also going to match with the next thing that you want them to do probably um engaging with you with your business um with you know um products or services of some kind um consulting as well can work great i've had clients with a lot of success writing framework books and then what they sell is you know really high-end consulting um, and Irene Payne asks, where would you like us to sign up for a conversation with you? Well, thank you, Irene. That is a super question. And I am going to go ahead and put that link in our chat here for you. So um, oh, let me not navigate away from Zoom. That would be so scary. Um, here we go. And um, Sue Humphrey asks, what is a framework book? Fantastic question, Sue. So a framework book would really um, probably be most appropriate for people who are maybe consultants or maybe they're coaches that have created their own signature um, process that they take their clients and customers through. Um, for instance, my client, Catherine Brown, her book, How Good Humans Sell, takes you through the exact framework that she walks her um, sales consulting clients through from the first step that she does with them all the way through the last thing she trains them on um, when her uh, package is complete. So that would be an example of a framework. Um, sometimes, you know, they're, they're like spelled out in letters that spell a word in each letter it re represents another concept that is taught. Um, sometimes it's a list of steps in a certain order. They may be numbered, um, but, you know, so like traction is a framework. Um, Donald Miller's um, story brand, story brand is a framework. Um, just for a few examples, the alter ego effect uh, by Todd Herman is also um, a framework book. And Nilam Nilama asks, can I use your advice for my journal or is it only for books? Absolutely. If this advice feels helpful for you, please use it for whatever you're working on. Um, I'm even I'm a I'm a creative writer by training. So if you get some ideas here, you're going to bring back to your poems or your novels. I'll, I'll be delighted for that to happen as well. But I will say this about journaling. Um, also, you know, sometimes when you're journaling, you are just writing for yourself. And that is not wrong to do when you just need to feel your feelings and just let it rush onto the page in this, you know, just like you're just um, open the artery and just let the blood flow. You know, sometimes you just need to do that. And that's different from writing for a reader. But what I'll say is if you do the journal and you just, you know, word vomit, you know, what happened and how you feel about it, then later you can take that and think, okay, I got that out of me. That was really good. And now what does the reader actually need to know from what I've written in order for them to understand the point? And a lot of times then you can actually just delete the things you were really, you know, concerned about sharing. They don't even need to be shared. Um, <laughs> and then you can even like adjust some of the details to make sure that um, you're not uh, in danger of um, having anyone that's in the story not appreciate how it's written and uh, you'll, you'll be off to the races. And Gary Pinnell asks, which book is she talking about? I don't hear well. Um, Gary, um, I am not sure which book that was. It was at 1245, so it was just a quick minute ago. I'm going to assume it's traction, so that's what I'm going to write in the chat for you. Um, and thank you for letting me know. Um, um, and I think it's by... By Wickham, if I'm not mistaken. Let me just look at my bookcase. Um, let's see here. Here we go. Okay, Gino Wickman. I'm glad I looked and didn't just write it. I think Sai is the writer of another book though that's kind of similar in content. Um, okay, so there you go, Gary. And um, so, Right, so it's a 15 minute, but they're um, they're scheduled uh, 30 minutes apart. So it's a true 30 minute, but um, it's a 15 link. So apologies for that confusion. And we have cleared our questions and we have 10 minutes. So I'm super excited about that. And um, I'm gonna go ahead and put our workbook in the chat and I see Alexa is back. She may have um, some uh, housekeeping or something to say, hey. 
Hello. No, this was a lot of fun. So I just want to make sure that everybody understands because we've got a couple offers, a couple different things happening. So just to wrap it around it. So first we have the 30 minute chat, which that link was the most recent one dropped. And don't worry if you're driving or cleaning or doing whatever you're doing while you listen to webinars, all of this will come out in the replay email with the links for you to access. So we have the, the free 15 minute or 30 minute chat thingy. We have the link to her $97 course. So if you want to grab the course that walks you through everything, um, which is really fantastic. And um, can you please drop that link again, Amy, so that we have that right up at the top here. Um, that's the, the, the whole course, which I don't know if you, or the mini course, I'm sorry. Do you want to talk just about that a little bit? And the key with that is that if you sign up through this link that we're dropping, you can sign up for a, a, a call with her as well for 30 minutes, um, a free bonus coaching call, not, not a discovery call, which I assume the 15 minute calls are correct. Can you explain the difference yeah. between these things? And then um, finally, the third one is the big course, which I need the link for that to make sure that we have that here hmm. as well. Sure, absolutely. So um, I just put the workbook in the chat. So I know I've just added a link and I apologize for that. But um, so the mini course, the mini course is the best selling book blueprint three day challenge. So there are three sets of worksheets and three instructional videos that take you through the three steps to create your best selling book blueprint. So the first thing we do is create your book pitch, which if you've um, dipped your toe in traditional publishing, you've probably heard about having to do pitching for your book. But the thing is, even if you're going to publish, self-publish, you still need to be able to quickly and magnetically tell people what your book's about, who it's for, and why they want to read it, and maybe even how it's different. So um, day one walks you through a worksheet with fill in the blank for that. I am a child of the 80s, so I love my fill in the blank, um, just like a Mad Libs. Um, and then day two looks at positioning your book as a leading title. So here, again, learning from traditional publishing when they might ask for comparative titles, what other books published recently by debut authors is your book like? We look at that even for your self-published book. And what we're doing there is looking at different spaces on the bookshelf. Because if you want to write a book about, um, uh, you know, um, transparency, well, sometimes coaches write books about transparency and vulnerability. But then on another area of the bookshelf, we have Brene Brown. And so if a coach comes in and says they want to write a book like Brene Brown, and what they mean is they want to write a book about vulnerability, then they're really better off not trying to put themselves in the social sciences category, but to come over to maybe a self-help and motivational category. Um, and so, so that's the kind of thing that we are doing there. And what we want to do is find a bookshelf where your book fits, fits in. It makes sense with the um, level of authority of the other authors on that bookshelf. And when people look for books on that topic, it makes sense for yours to be on that page of other books listed. And then how your book is going to stand out, what it is that your book does, what it is that you do that brings value to the conversation that the other authors are not um, hitting on either in the way you do or at all. And then on day three, we look at creating your book's profit plan. Again, because a book is a business, whether we want it to be or not, even if it is a poetry chat book. Um, I know this because I used to have them printed at Kinko's and I sold them one by one <laughs> for $5. Um, but when your book is your business, we look at what is what are you willing to do to promote your book? We look at um, what do you want people to do after they read your book? And what we mean by that is where do you want them to go to continue engaging with you and consuming your content? and perhaps when you have an offer available to um, make the pitch to them so they have the opportunity to continue working with you and learning from you. And then we also look at getting them on your email list. So it's that lead magnet that I mentioned earlier. So I have a process and a worksheet to go through all that. And we also have a spreadsheet where you, as you're doing your homework, you can also input it there. So this is a shared spreadsheet. So then everybody can kind of see what other people are doing, which might give you ideas as well. And um, with all this completed, when you book that consultation with me that Alexa was just talking about, you send me your homework in advance and we are gonna talk about your blueprint. So yes, this is 
this is um, because you. That's an important work. note. <laughs> That's an, yes. So it's not just a call. It's a it's a go through your blueprint together. I'm glad you said that. I'll make sure that's in the in the message as well, because that's that's great. It's golden. It's I mean, I could charge quite a bit of money for this, but for anybody that's done the work, I just I want to see it. I want to praise you. And, you know, let's just see if we can optimize it a little bit. And, you know, off you go. That's great. What a, that's a lot of, uh, that's a lot of stuff happening for $97. That's, um, really great. Okay. So we've got that link, which, um, which Amy just dropped in there. So that's at the, um, cindychildress.com forward slash WIP. So grab that course. It's self-paced. You work through it. Somebody had asked if there was a limit on it. It's not because this is a come in, receive your content and do what you're doing, but you can, sign up for a call to go through your blueprint and make sure you're right on track and doing all the things. So that's great. And then we have um, the big course. Again, remind us because you gave some information about that, but I don't have a link for that. Sure. Uh, yes, I can put a link in the chat. I will say the early bird special is not on the information page, but if you want the early bird special, just reach out to me and I will honor it, especially about getting on a call and talking to me about it. I'll nice. certainly do that just so you have the information. Let me, let me pull that link up. And in the meantime, I'll just remind you. So crank out your book in eight weeks is a book writing course and author mentorship program. So you get access to eight modules that walk you through the exact um, steps that I do with ghostwriting client starting with step one when we create that detailed table of contents and then um, creating the open-ended questions just as if I were going to interview a ghostwriting client mm -hmm. you create questions for yourself based on your detailed outline for each chapter because when you start sitting down to write if you're just answering questions instead of seeing a topic and think well, what can I say about this? I could say a lot of things about this. What does the reader want to know? You know, some things that we've talked about today. If you're just answering questions, then it's easy to just put the information there, tell the story. I've got a special format for questions just for stories to make sure you don't forget that the story has to have a point. So all that is covered. Um, we do a word count tracker and, and decide on the word count goal that you have for your book and the word count goal that you have for each chapter. And as I mentioned, then um, each week I pull up the tracker and we praise everybody's progress. I also do something called gamification. So when you hit 10,000 words, you get a prize for being in the 10,000 word club. Same thing for 20,000 words and 30,000 words. These are things that I mail to you just to make you feel special and just to be an extra incentive um, to participate and then also feel like you're getting somewhere. Again, those serotonin hits. I have ADHD myself, so I need all the cheering that I can possibly get. Um, and um, by the end of the course, most students have written at least 30,000 words. We end with a capstone event, which is the literary salon. When you are invited to a webinar that I promote to my entire list and all my social media ch channels, um, where you get to share a little bit about your book and also include a link where people can find you and know when your book comes out. We have a one day author mastermind right here in Houston, Texas, October 26th, which everyone in Crank Out Your Book in Eight Weeks is invited to attend. Things like a personal chef coming to my house, um, you know, a photographer at the event, but really it's a chance for you to meet other people that are doing the work and just be shoulder to shoulder and cheer each other on and learn from each other. And then um, there's the 12 month um, A-list author club for continued accountability. And, you know, really, I want everybody to get over the finish line. So I'll put everything that I can together to make that um, as likely as possible to happen and as easy as possible at every point that I can. Awesome. So the early bird um, special on that. So the link you're going to drop to us that has the big overview of things, but the early bird special, can you send me um, something about that so that people know what they're getting early birds? So we can include that in the email as well. Yes, absolutely. I guess, well, you know, I'll put, let me just put, um, uh, let's see, I didn't know that you would be so generous to let me talk about my offer. So <laughs> that's why I had um, kind of aired toward, you know, a light touch. <laughs> but um, you know, let me absolutely. just grab it. 
you know, one of the most important things about these webinars is that, yes, we want to bring good information to our audience. And, to, and you did. You delivered great information um, at the wonderful price of nothing to our audience. So thank you so much for that. But at the same time, we also want to make sure that people know and understand what's available for them to take it to the next step. It may not be for everybody to go through this program, but there may be people in this audience who need to know what, how else they can work with you and what else you are doing. So we definitely want to make sure that we are, are telling people about it. Um, you know, it's, it's, it's important to know that. So, um, and you offer such a great range too, from very reasonably, very reasonably priced to, you know, the, the bigger price and for people who are wanting to go into that next level. So I think that's wonderful. Um, yeah, so we will make sure all of these are in there and, oh, you do have, that is the early bird special link right there. Yes. Yes. Okay. Wonderful. We will make sure all these links are in the in the program, in the email, in the email so that everybody can gain, gain access to that. Um, you've got the free workbook to download. So make sure you grab that. We will send out, um, Cindy sent over her slides. So we'll make sure that's in the replay email that comes as well. And this has just been um, such great examples and such a great uh, organized approach to walking through all of this. I mean, there, it, it, we have the process of writing, like if there's so many things that go into it, right? You can't sell a book that's not a good book. So it has to be written well. And it has to, especially with the nonfiction, you have to have the people have to know and understand the transformation or what they're getting from that book. And I think a lot of times it, we don't always incorporate that into it as well as we can. Um, so this was a really, really great reminder of that. But then once it's out there, what do we do with that? How do we make sure that we're really taking the next steps to get to grow our business through it so um thank you for so much and to wrap things up is there anything else you would like to share or provide to I mean you've provided so much what else would you like to share in closing <laughs> sure um I'll say if you want to follow me on social media um, my Instagram handle is at Cindy Childers PhD and I'm very consistent. So that's the same handle on Instagram and Facebook, as well as threads. I'm trying that out too. So come find me there. Um, and I have a quiz, discover your number one best-selling author personality. And the link is cindychildress.com backslash quiz. And um, you can always take that and just get a little bit of help from me beyond my email list until you just might be ready to talk to me. That would be wonderful too. Awesome. I'm following you now. I wasn't following you from my personal. We were following you, obviously, from the Women in Publishing Summit. But now I am following you from my personal account, too. So yay. And let me grab this quiz before we end this so that we have this also for the replay. All the things. Okay, wonderful. Thank you so very much again. Thank you to all of our attendees for being here today. Uh, we will try to get this replay out to you by the end of the day. I make no promises, though, other than you will have the replay by at least tomorrow at the latest. <laughs> um, don't forget, we have a lot of stuff happening over uh, the next few weeks. Please pay attention to your emails that come out on Fridays. Those include um, everything that's happening in the next week or two or three. And you can also always go over to Women in Publishing summit.com forward slash events to see what is happening. Thank you again uh, for being such a, a, a generous sponsor of the conference so that we can continue to bring education and resources to our audience uh, throughout the entire year, not just the conference. And we're so, we're so pleased to uh, partner with you and really appreciate you. Thank you. All right. Thanks everyone. Have a great day.